Our top focus this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will sail an INS Vikramaditya, the largest warship of the Indian Navy today. The PM will dedicate the warship, India's second largest carrier after INS Virat, to the nation today. So, get in for Modi's visit. The warship was commissioned by former Defence Minister A.K. Antony in Russia last year. INS Vikram Aditya, the largest and the most powerful warship of the Indian Navy. Today, this newest warship will host Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who will dedicate it to the nation. The ship was commissioned by former Defence Minister A.K. Antony in Russia last year. The Prime Minister is scheduled to sail on INS Vikram Aditya at 9.30 a.m. He will stay there till 1.30 in the afternoon. During the visit, Modi will be shown the operational capabilities of the carrier, including takeoffs and landings by the MiG-29K fighters on the ship. The Prime Minister will also be accorded naval honours. The security experts are describing the Prime Minister's decision to visit the warship as a good sign for the Defence Forces. Well, the early signs are excellent because the manifesto that they uh, wrote on did mention security issues quite extensively. The President's address to the uh, Joint Houses of Parliament contains a lot of mention. And the very fact that the Prime Minister has found time within the first three weeks of his tenure to visit uh, uh, a military establishment and that also uh, a ship at sea, I think speaks for their intentions. The INS Vikram Aditya is the most powerful symbol of India's military reach and is designed to undertake strike missions across the world. Vikram Aditya, the floating airfield, has an overall length of about 284 meters and a maximum beam of about 60 meters. Standing about 20 stories tall, from keel to the highest point, the ship has a total of 22 decks. With over 1,600 personnel on board, Vikramaditya is literally a floating city. Today, uh, we are talking about Vikramaditya. Now, that is okay for sea dominance. What about sea denial? One submarine after another is giving trouble. It means we don't have sea denial. We are gone in for Vikramaditya and we try to equip and looking in uh, that direction. So, this hollowness must be removed. But India faces uh, huge maritime challenges uh, today. First, because of our geostrategic location, which has been known for eons, we configure ourselves very predominantly within the Indian Ocean. And today, it is not just uh, advantage of that location, but also a huge responsibility when it comes to sea lines of communication, strategic lines of communication, and our own well-being, as you saw in 2611. Therefore, apart from looking after our own territorial integrity, we have a huge challenge in so far as asymmetric threats, non-traditional threats at sea and from the sea are concerned. Meanwhile, tight security arrangements are in place for PM Modi's visit to INS Vikramaditya. Warships, combat aircraft and surveillance planes have been deployed by the Navy as it is leaving no stone unturned to prove foolproof security to the Prime Minister. When Prime Minister Narendra Modi boards the 44,500-ton displacement aircraft carrier INS Vikramaditya, it won't be a joyride. He will come face to face with critical deficiencies that the Indian Navy is facing. From helicopters to missiles to torpedoes to ships and submarines, the Indian Navy desperately requires all of this to remain a potent fighting force in the Indian Ocean region. The Navy and the nation is looking to the Prime Minister. Does he have the answers? With Prem Chand Mishra and Shivaroor Gaurav Savant in Delhi for headlines today. INS Vikram Aditya, the country's largest ship, was commissioned last year by then Defence Minister A.K. Antony in Russia. The Russians, in fact, have made uh, has have taken two decades to hand over the ship to India. Take a look. Along with its enormous bulk and the 1,600 personnel it will take to operate her on the high seas, the Vikramaditya comes with the big burden of history. For one thing, Vikramaditya is this ship's third name. She was originally commissioned into the Russian Navy as Baku in 1987, then renamed after naval pioneer Admiral Sergei Georgievich Gorshkov when the Soviet Union collapsed four years later. 
She may look spanking new today, and in many ways she truly is, but her journey into Indian hands began two decades ago. In 1994, P.V. Narasimha Rao, who was both Prime Minister and Defence Minister at the time, was offered the Soviet-era Admiral Gorshkov aviation cruiser. The Indian Navy was immediately interested. But in the turbulent few years that followed politically in Delhi, the offer receded to the notorious Indian backburner. The first of many delays that would plague Project 11430, as it was codenamed. When the offer was back on the table, it was just before India went to war. In July 1999, the ship was towed to Sverodvinsk, a Russian Cold War era shipbuilding town famous as the site for the country's only manufacturer of nuclear submarines, Sevmash. After a decade of negotiations, the elusive contract was signed on the 20th of January 2004 in the presence of then Defence Minister George Fernandes and his visiting Russian counterpart Sergei Ivanov. It was the biggest defence deal thus far between the two old allies. By the end of that year, work had begun in earnest to transform a rusting heap of forgotten metal into the shining aircraft carrier that the Indian Navy had been promised. But as the first Russian engineers entered the insides of the great ship, they reeled in horror. A close inspection of the Gorshkov showed that she would never be repaired and refurbished in the promised 52 months. Russia, a veteran shipbuilder, and India, with its painstaking attention to detail, had managed to stunningly underestimate the scope of work involved. Realizing just how much the scope of work on the massive warship had actually been underestimated by both sides came as a terrible shock to the Indian Navy. The cost of the ship more than doubled to nearly two and a half billion dollars. More than the cost. It was the shattering delay of five years that seriously made things very hot for the Indian Navy. The Indian Navy had no choice but to swallow hard and sail on. Its patience and resilience, fortunately, was rewarded. Slowly, very slowly, the promised transformation took place. Piece by painful piece, the old Admiral Goshkov shed its skin to gradually reveal a ship that was by all accounts impressive and formidable. With baby steps that spanned over two years, the Russian and Indian teams finally mustered the confidence to push the new behemoth out to sea on her own steam. Well, in fact, uh, I believe we're getting first pictures uh, of INS uh, Vikram Aditya, the largest and most powerful uh, warship on uh, to be acquired by India. Today, this uh, new warship will host Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who will dedicate it to the nation. Let's get in a word from our editor at large, Rahul Kamal, who's joining us uh, on the phone line from Goa. Rahul, what are the preparations you're seeing underway? This is a huge, uh, huge, big, it's a big day for India today. Uh, we've just landed on board the INS Vikram Aditya. It's a cloudy sky this morning. We were airlifted via ALH through advanced flight helicopter through and brought to the Vikram Aditya, which is fairly close to the shore. We are currently on board a glistening Vikram Aditya which will be commissioned by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and dedicated to the nation in a short while from now. Massive, massive security cordon all across the, uh, the sea being secured with uh, frigid destroyers. We see the INS Virat, the other aircraft carrier in the fleet of the Indian Navy also deployed close by. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is expected to land here at 9.30 this morning. They've got various, uh, they've got various drills There'll also be live landings of the MiG-29K, the special naval variant of the MiG-29, uh, which will be landing for in front of the Prime Minister. So they've got uh, fridges that will be passing, there'll be destroyers, they'll be showing Narendra Modi the sense of naval power, giving the Prime Minister a sense of the prowess of the Indian Navy. That's the plan. The question for us is uh, the weather. It was raining all through the night last night, Pouring quite heavily, 
uh, it's very clouded uh, this morning as well and that's the concern that everyone that we've been speaking to has that the navy is ready but will lord indra allow the navy to demonstrate to uh, prime minister narendra modi what it is capable of remember uh, you need that the navy has been through a series of in unfortunate incidents over the last several months and uh, because of which morale uh, had taken a bit of a hit there's a new navy chief who's now in place uh the prime minister coming and the one thing that everyone is very thrilled and delighted about is the fact that so soon into his prime ministership within the first month narendra modi has taken time out on uh, to be on a military vessel and that i think is significant there were four paragraphs in the president's address uh where national security was spoken of and that's something that all the officers we've been speaking to in the army navy and air force are very happy about the national security finally seems to be a priority for the government and that's something that they're absolutely delighted about Well, Rahul, thanks so much for that uh, update. Rahul Kamal, uh, our editor at large, reporting from on board the INS Vikramaditya. The Prime Minister is scheduled to sail on uh, the ship at about 10 this morning. He's likely to stay there till about 1:30 in the afternoon. He'll also be accorded with naval honours.